On this week's show, we introduce you to Melissa Vitale from Graphics Unlimited. If the name sounds familiar, think about those great graphics you've seen on our Super Noble Projects for Care Camps. Her rise in the RV industry has been nothing short of phenomenal. Then, we join Mark Polk from RV Education 101 as he shows us how to turn our regular window shades into blackout shades in a matter of minutes. Later, in Pause on Board, we catch up with Dr. Fitz from Fitz Vet and see what traveling pet advice she has in her medicine bag for us this week. Plus, our Care Camp Super Nobo 2 sweepstakes is now live. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by Forest River. Follow the river. I'm Melissa Vitale, Chief Executive Officer of Graphics Unlimited in Bremen, Indiana. Uh, we are a producer and design company for the RV industry. We design and manufacture the exterior graphics that go on the recreational vehicles. Graphics Unlimited is a full service graphics company and we work with our customers, whether it be the RV manufacturers or dealers or other industries, from the beginning of the concept all the way through to the end of the project where we manufacture what we have created. And that covers exterior graphics as well as interior graphics, windows, floors, walls as well. Every project has its own interest because every project is different and we get to be creative for that particular customer and providing them what they have envisioned. I started at Graphics Unlimited in 2005 and I started out in the sales department and was responsible for going out and getting customers and creating relationships and working with our design team to come up with designs that the industry liked and staying on trend with what was happening in the industry. The RV industry does not beat around the bush, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, it is, you know, yes, I will talk to you today. No, I don't have time for you today. There, it's pretty cut and dry. Um, it's very busy. And um, so it was, it was much different than what I was used to. I developed some thick skin over the years and I had to learn how to pick myself up and, and go back at it the next day. I love to get my hands dirty. There is not a job here except, except maybe design, which I've toyed with a little bit, but I've printed, I have cut parts, I have applied. I actually really enjoy applying graphics when I get the opportunity because it's challenging. And then the reward at the end is that you have this beautiful unit to look at and we did that. So we can be very proud of that. Being hands-on um, helps me make good decisions because I can understand the challenges and the issues that may arise for my employees, my customers. So by staying grounded and being involved in every aspect and knowing what's happening and it, it really helps to make good, valuable decisions when we have challenges. The creative side of it can be a lot of fun, um, but then we are confined a little bit to what the customer wants to see. And we have a great team of artists that help us create all kinds of ideas. And then we present those to the customers. And it's always interesting to get their feedback on what their thoughts are, because we look at those designs and graphics every day. And so to get the feedback um, from our customers or from retail, especially on the retail side, um, to see what the feedback is really helps us to move forward and go with the next design, you know. And so one thing leads into another, and to watch color trends, we do get to have a lot of fun with what we do. We'll get back to Melissa at Graphics Unlimited right after this word from our sponsors. Aquacam Tossins. 
so fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. My early career, I began with um, a plastics company in Elkhart and we did vacuum forming plastics. And I worked my way up through that company actually and learned every aspect. And I had um, my boss there was, was a great mentor and he taught me a lot and he taught me to work really hard and made it so that I was very interested in learning all the different aspects of that business. Um, from there I went into interior design and I spent a few years in interior design which was um, probably my passion at the time and then Graphics Unlimited reached out to me to work with them on sales which I found very interesting but I was a little bit intimidated by the RV industry. I had not worked in it prior to that so in 2005 I entered the RV industry and over the last 16 years I have developed relationships and met amazing people and have learned to fall in love with the RV industry. I think over the last especially 10 years I've seen a lot more women coming into the industry and being very successful. Um, when I first began I would say it was there was definitely more men than women. I think there probably still is but the industry is welcoming to women or to anyone that wants to be a success in the industry. You do have to work hard, you have to be motivated, you have to be creative, and you cannot be discouraged by challenges. I think women are very good at that and very good at multitasking and overcoming the hurdles that are there for women in all industries, but you have a certain resilience in the RV industry. I have seen many women in the industry climb the ladder at their own companies, um, whether it's the manufacturers or other suppliers. And I would say it has evolved over the last decade more than prior to that. Um, women are welcomed in the industry and they're hardworking, multitasking, and they're motivated um, to, to make something of themselves in the industry. Well, at Graphics Unlimited, actually, we employ a majority of women. We have great men that work here and contribute every day, but we do employ a majority of women. Um, and the roles they play are all the way from the receptionist to our management team is actually 99% women. We, only, we, have, we have one gentleman on the management team and our sales staff is three women, one man. And even downstairs in production, we have a majority of women. So women pay, play all of the roles at Graphics Unlimited. I feel that's what I love about the industry is that every day is a challenge and every challenge is different. Some days you just feel like, how are we gonna overcome this? And by the next day we have it figured out. And the RV industry is definitely innovative and challenging and but I have seen this industry overcome some of the biggest economical challenges as well as the pandemic last year when everybody feared we were done and we turned it around to actually be the biggest success story um, of any industry I feel like in the world actually and um, now RVing has become the greatest thing because people don't want to fly or don't want to stay in a hotel well the RV was the perfect answer and so the industry really marketed that and has made us all very successful and has continued to grow I would say if any woman is looking for a challenging career 
this is a great industry to get into. You're able to be creative. There are so many various opportunities, whether it be in a production type role or an, a creative type role or an office type role. Um, I do not think the industry cares anymore so much whether you're male or female, but whether you're a hard worker and motivated. From off-the-road adventure camping to luxurious full-time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcole refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcole RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcole.com. Win this 2021 Super Nobo 2. Rolling on TV and Forest River have teamed up again in supporting care camps with a sweepstakes for this custom 2021 Super Nobo 2 travel trailer. Don't pass up this opportunity to support care camps, which are special oncology camps for children with cancer that allows these deserving children the chance to enjoy life in the great outdoors and just be kids. By supporting care camps, you also get the chance to win this awesome one-of-a-kind Super Novo 2. For a full video on this Super Novo 2 and how to enter the sweepstakes, just visit RollinOnTV.com and click on the Care Camp Sweepstakes link. By the way, that beautiful Advanced Elements kayak you see with the Novo is one of the fun RV toys included in the sweepstakes package. I'd say it's time to log on to RollinOnTV.com and enter the sweepstakes soon. Hi, I'm Mark Polk and I would like to welcome you to this product installation video presented by United Shade. The product is this dark out kit, a do-it-yourself kit that transforms the existing pleated shades in your RV to blackout shades for optimal privacy. This dark out kit is a great solution for bedroom and living quarters to create a darkened private space. The dark out kits are available in three different widths, 26 inch, 50 inch, and 72 inch, and all with the 50 inch drop length to ensure proper fit on any custom size pleated shade. Let's install a dark out kit right now. Prior to starting, completely review and understand the directions. See unitedshade.com for additional information. Required items, scissors, kitchen steak utility knife, tape measure, pencil, and existing pleated shade. Start by removing the existing pleated shade. Remove the screws from the cord retainers at the bottom of the window. Next, remove the shade by unclipping the brackets or removing screws from the top rail. Set any screws aside for reinstallation. Place the existing shade on a clean, dry, flat work surface with the back of the shade that faces the window side up. Note, blackout fabric will install on the back of your existing pleated shade. Trim to correct drop length. Determine the drop length of the blackout fabric needed by counting the number of pleat peaks, not valleys, on your existing shade. With your blackout fabric white side up and both tails at each end of the fabric pointing up, count a drop length of the same number of pleat peaks. Using scissors, cut along the pleat peak of your blackout fabric. Trim to correct width. Determine the width of the blackout fabric needed using a tape measure to measure the width of the existing shade. With the blackout fabric folded, compressed together, and tan side up, measure the same width from the left side of the blackout fabric and mark with a pencil. 
With the fabric still folded together and tan side up, take the provided cutting guide plates and place on either side of the blackout fabric. Align fabric between the top and bottom holes on each plate. Secure using the provided bolts and wing nuts. Align the edge of the cutting guide plate with your pencil marking and cut using a kitchen steak knife. Notch fabric to fit around cords. Determine where cord notches will need cut in blackout fabric by measuring from the left edge of your existing pleated shade to the location of the first cord. With the blackout fabric folded together and tan side up, Measure the same distance from the left edge of the blackout fabric and mark cord location with the pencil. Measure and mark all remaining cord locations. Depending on size, there may be two or four cords in your existing pleated shade. To fit your blackout fabric around existing pleated shade cords correctly, use the fabric cutting guide and align each pencil mark with the notch slot in the fabric cutting guide. Using your kitchen knife, carefully slice through the pleats on the tan side of your blackout fabric. Be sure to cut to the bottom of the notch in the template guide. Reposition the template and repeat this procedure for the remaining cord locations. Secure blackout fabric to the shade. After all cord notches are cut, unfold your blackout fabric and with the white side up, position the blackout fabric tan side down on the top of the existing shade. Press and weave the blackout fabric into the pleats of the existing shade. Work the slots that were cut into the blackout fabric around the cords in the existing shade. Blackout fabric may not rest flush against the existing shade until the entire blackout fabric is weaved into place. Once the blackout fabric is positioned in place, push the shade close by gripping and pressing the head rail and bottom rail. While holding the shade close with one hand, pull the tension cords tight on the left and right sides of the shade. Next, gently work the entire shade open and close to fully work the cords into each notch made in your blackout fabric. Once you have weaved in your blackout fabric, secure both tails of the blackout fabric to the first and last pleat of your existing shade by distributing the foam double stick tape squares provided along the blackout fabric tails. Distribute half of the squares provided across the top tail and the remaining half along the bottom tail. Remove the backing on tape pieces and press blackout fabric in place on existing pleat shade. Once blackout is secured in place, tuck any remaining fabric tail into the top and bottom rails. Now just follow the instructions to properly reinstall the pleated shade. That's all there is to turning the existing pleated shades in your RV into private blackout shades. For more information about the Darkout Shade Kit or shades in general, visit unitedshade.com. Happy camping. Wow, am I glad I used AquaCam. Maybe chili wasn't the best idea. AquaCam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. Welcome to Rolling on TV's Paws on Board. I'm Dr. Fitz and this is Theo. Today I'm gonna to be talking about tick prevention. I'm gonna be addressing what ticks are, why we worry about them, and what you can do about it. Yeah, but. <laughs> First, Ticks are eight-legged parasites that can bite both our pets and us. Depending on the stage of their life cycle, they can be different sizes, some even about the size of the head of a pin. This can make them extremely difficult to find within our pet's fur. 
There are different species of ticks depending on what area of the country that you're in. Younger ticks tend to feed on small wildlife like mice and other rodents, but eventually will feed on larger animals such as deer, dogs, and people. Ticks are commonly found in wooded areas, tall grass, and brush, but you can also find them in your own backyard. We primarily worry about ticks because they can carry bacteria that can make you sick. Many of the bacteria can cause acute short-term illness, but they can also cause longer-term chronic illness as well. Some of the diseases you might've heard of, like Lyme disease. There's others like Rocky Mountain spotted fever, anaplasmosis, and ehrlichiosis, among others. These diseases spread often depend on what type of the country that you're in and what type of tick is actually biting. The best thing that you can do for your pet is to keep them on tick prevention. Preventative products work to kill the ticks when they bite, which reduces the likelihood that they'll spread disease over time. There are different options for preventative products. There's chewable medications, which are usually nice and tasty, topical medications, which you can apply a small amount of liquid to the back of your pet's neck, or there's flea and tick collars. There are pros and cons to each type of medication and prevention. My recommendation is to talk to your primary care veterinarian about which product would be best for your pet based on the area of the country that you're in and your lifestyle. Most products on the market last for about one month. There are several products that last for about three months and then collars last a bit longer. Most products can be purchased through your veterinarian or with a prescription. The primary concern is to make sure that your pet is protected for the entire length of time that you'll be on vacation. So if your pet's gonna be due for a dose while you're on your trip, make sure you bring the dose with you so that your pet's covered. Most veterinarians recommend year-round treatment for ticks. In Michigan, with our variable weather, I've pulled ticks off pets in early March and often several. So ticks can be active in all sorts of weather. Even if your pet is on prevention, you still may see a tick on them. If you notice a tick, the best thing that you can do is remove it. Daily checks of you and your pet can be helpful in early tick removal. Make sure to check between your dog's toes, in and around the ears, and everywhere on the face. So when you check the feet, you can lift their feet and check between their toes. Make sure you look between all the hair and then flip it over and look between the paw pads as well. Ticks like to hide in places that are not easy to reach. So the tools that you'll need for the job include tweezers or there's commercially available tick remover tools and antiseptic wipes. To remove the tick, you'll part the fur to find the tick and grasp it as close to the skin as possible. You don't want to squeeze too hard and actually crush the tick. You'll pull away from the skin with gentle pressure. Again, our goal is to remove the entire tick, including the mouth parts that have actually bitten your pet. Once the tick's removed, you'll take your antiseptic wipes, wipe the area, and then wash your hands. If the mouth parts are left in the skin, you should monitor the site for signs of infection, so make sure you're checking it at least once a day. What you can do after removal is then dispose of the tick in a sealed plastic bag in the trash. If you are interested in what type of tick has bitten and what diseases it might carry, some states actually have a tick submission program. So you can check on your state website for more information. Ultimately, the easiest way to prevent a tick bite and the diseases they may carry is prevention. So keep your pet up to date and travel safely. For more information about traveling safely with your pets, visit rollinontv.com. Tune in next time for more pet health information. I'm Dr. Fitz, this is Theo. Thanks for watching Paws on Board. For additional information on anything featured on this week's show, along with additional stories, videos, and information about RVs, camping, and the RV lifestyle, Along with the latest news and trends, be sure to visit our website at RollingOnTV.com. As usual, this has been another fun production. If you're into RVing or just appreciate vintage vehicles, be sure to set your GPS for the RV MH Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. This museum houses the largest collection of vintage RVs and trailers dating as far back as 1916. For more information, visit their website at rvmhhalloffame.org.